Hello there, John Zimmerman here with Table Rock Trout Unlimited. Today we're going to be working on um, one of my all-time favorite flies, especially when it's combined with a dropper such as the soft tackle pheasant tail that you can see on our website too. Um, this is a um, my version of an, an elk hair caddis or a hair wing caddis. I'm actually going to be using deer hair to tie it instead of the traditional elk hair. But this fly is um, bomb proof. It floats like a champ because of the addition of CDC in addition to the elk hair. And um, we're not going to use any hackling on it, which is going to allow the body of the fly to rest right in the surface film. So we're going to get to tying this. This is a, um, a Daiichi number 1180 in a 12. Um, I'm tying it in a 12 because you'll be able to see it a little bit better than if I tied it in um, a number 14 which is my favorite version of this fly. To start we're going to add a, um, a shuck or an egg case to the back of this. Either way we want um, whether you think it's a shuck or whether you think it's um, an egg case um, we want a little bit of tailing or trailing material coming off the back of this. Um, I have tied this fly with and without the um, the trailing material and it is remarkable how much difference the, uh, the trailing material makes um, coming off the back. Um, so as I've um, done several times in several of these, I always use the waste material to help me finish the body of a fly so that um, when I get back here to the back, if I had just trimmed that waste material off flush with the tie-in point, um, I would have had a big old bump right there and it would have prevented me from really working on the taper of this body. Even though the, the taper is not really critical here for me to work on because I'm going to be covering all of that up with peacock curl. Just in general, make sure you're using your waist to help you um, to help you finish out the body of a fly. We're going to tie in some small amber copper wire. Where that will help us secure the body of the fly which is going to be peacock curl. So I'm going to take three strands of peacock curl and tie them in at the back. One of the we're going to tie this peacock curl in by the tips instead of the butt. If you um, are used to looking at peacock curl you know that it is thicker at the butt than it is at the the head of the stem and so we want this to naturally taper for us so we're going to put the thin sections in the back and um, taper up to those thicker sections. So to help you out, um, make sure this peacock curl goes down smoothly, I'm going to twist it into a little bit of a braid and um, that will help those fibers not really um, twist out. I oh, broke. Well that will happen. So if you go back, just retie right back in. Don't make a big deal out of it. It happens to everyone. Um, especially when you tie in by the, the tips of the peacock. It will um, like to break on you. So just wrap those in in touching wraps um, as you go up the, the bulk of the fly. And we want to tie those off right there so that we've got plenty of room at the head of the, the fly to tie in our two pieces of wing material. We're going to take this and counter wrap it to help secure that peacock in place. If you do not do this, extra little step right here, um, the first time a fishy gets one of his false teeth stuck in it, um, that peacock curl is going to unravel on you. So don't um, skimp on that step. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take four CDC fibers. I am using Natural Done as a color here. Uh, if you want to use a, um, a brighter color, it will assist you in seeing it at a far distance for sure. So we have stacked these four CDC feathers right on top of each other. Um, and we're going to measure them against the body of the fly. And we want them to go just to the 
just to the end of the hook. So I'm going to take three wraps in front. I'm sorry, three wraps behind the, the tie-off, tie-in point, and three wraps in front, and that is firmly locked in place. The next thing that I'm going to do is um, cut a pinch of deer hair. I'm going to tie that in right on top of the the CDC. So if you can, um, don't clump your deer hair or your elk hair up on top of each other. Um, that'll make getting these guard hairs really difficult out. So just the the more those can fan out, the easier it is to get rid of all those guard hairs. You got to get rid of those. They hold water when the fly gets wet. They make stacking these really tough. So get rid of all those guard hairs. You do not want them in your finished fly. After you have um, gotten rid of those guard hairs, take your hair stacker. And give it a, um, a number of, of good hard taps to line up all those, the ends of those deer hair. And you're gonna lay these flush with the end of those CDC feathers and give it several good turns. Now, since we've already got a base of material here, we're probably going to need to put more turns around this deer hair to keep it from moving around. So do not feel guilty about putting in some extra turns. They are needed to keep it in place. And then just like um, I showed you a couple times, always make some securing wraps in front. And then to finish this fly off, all we're going to do is pull the deer hair and the CDC up at an angle and trim off a little head. And you can see this little um, guy, oh that was actually a piece of trim. Now if you want to secure this fly even more, what you can do is you can take your thread and run it right through these fibers of the head. As you can see, it's not really making a difference in the overall look of the head of the fly, but it will add um, a great deal of security. And then finish this off with a couple turns of a whip finish twice. I always whip finish twice unless I've been bad and not left myself enough room at the top. And then this fly is done. Um, one of my all-time favorite patterns. Um, super productive on wild water fish. It is a super um, dry dropper fly because the CDC and the elk, or CDC and the deer here in this case, really keep that fly um, floating really high. To add um, even more security and more durability to this, if you are um, inclined to use head cement or as um, I use Sally Hansen's um, you can go in and put just a drop on those um, where you tied the elk hair or in this case deer hair in and that will really help lock those bugs in place, lock those feathers in place, lock that hair in place and it's not going to go anywhere, it's definitely not going to go anywhere now. This fly is a super producer on its own. It's an even better producer when it's got a squirmy wormy or a soft tackle pheasant tail going off the back of it. Um, great fly. You should definitely take a little bit of time and learn to tie it. Also, don't be afraid to play with the color of um, this but I use Darlon for that and I used it in red there. Um, amber Darlon works great but any of the sparkle materials that you um, that are commercially available are um, really great. Darlon, um, Supreme Hair, um, Antron, any of those work great for that fly. So um, get to tying and go catch your fish.